bottle. There are baits. If you have a mouse trap and you want to catch a mice, you put what the mice would like or what the mouse likes. You put some cheese. Sometimes you put a trail and you leave the trap in such a very easy way that the mouse can be caught. You leave it in a place where you know he's likely to go in some corner by the door or somewhere around the fridge in the kitchen. You leave food around. And most times when you wake up the next morning, there's a dead mouse in your trap. If the trap was so obvious to the mouse, he wouldn't have gone that way. So temptations are subtle. Influences are subtle. Decoys always look like the real thing. If you read some of the World War II stories when they were fighting the Japanese and all that, they had like ammo tankers that were just made of rubber, like pumped rubber dinghies, and they had them all in strategic places as if they were the real thing. And of course, there were ambushes set. All kinds of things are done because the decoy, ladies and gentlemen, the counterfeit looks very much like the original. So you really have to know the original for you to be able to tell this is counterfeit and this is original. So I would say for all of us, for myself, for every one of us, be careful your associations, who influences you, who has your ear, who tells you this is good, this is bad, this must be endorsed, this is excellent, this is bad. Who shifts you from the thing that you know you ought to be doing. Secondly, I will say, watch your pronouncements. Uh, we call them confessions, the things that you say. You know, I am bad, I am ugly, I am broke. <laughs> Certainly, if you are, you are. But the thing about it is that you do not help yourself. I do not help myself if I keep being negative on myself. The force to pick myself up, the grace to look up to God and ask for mercy is just not there because I'm beating down, beating down, frustrated and just resigned and giving up. Occasionally may put myself in a world of escapism where I lock myself in a mold like a young boy who runs up to his bedroom and holds his ball and clutches his ball to himself in a corner. It makes his world there. Even though he's upset, he's bitter, he was not picked in the team, he didn't score the goal, he's in that little corner. And everything hap that happens to him, he runs to that little corner. So we need to watch our pronouncements and our confessions, what we say. Because there is a scripture in the Bible that says, you shall have whatsoever you say, positive or negative. There is another scripture in the first gospel of Matthew that says, by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. There is another scripture in the Bible, in Proverbs, the middle of the Bible, chapter 18, I believe it's verse 21, I may be wrong, but it says something to the effect that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love the fruit will eat of it. So you can use your tongue to speak life, or you can use your tongue to speak death. The truth, is about, the truth about our nations is that no one nation really has all the answers and, in the, and is the best. And so sometimes people love their nations. You go to some nations, the people are patriotic. You know, when their national anthems are being sung, they put their hand on their chest or, you know, they, they stand upright and, you know, they, they, there's, a, there's something about it. That nation might be struggling economically. It might not be doing well in the Human Development Index of the United Nations World Report. But the people feel that there can be a better tomorrow. I think sometimes the mindset is that God has given us today. Let's make the best of it for tomorrow. Now, there are other nations where everybody criticizes everything. And obviously, um, if there is one block of nations, then that happens a lot. Unfortunately, it's the African continent. It is one continent where you hear this phrase all the time. The problem with Africa is, the problem with Sierra Leone is, the problem with Namibia is, the problem with the Gambia is. It's as if everybody has knowledge of the problem 
and very few people talk about the solution. So sometimes we must bless rather than curse. Sometimes we must help rather than hinder. Sometimes we must build up rather than tear down. The third thing I think will be important for me and for you in 2012 is, ladies and gentlemen, when you know, and, and that's one of my motives in life, one of my motives in life is that when I know the thing that God wants for me to do, the time it will take for me to get it would always be worth my while because the journey is as important as the destination. It's one of my maxims for myself. I repeat, when I know what God wants for me to get in life, the time it will take me would always be worth my while. If I have to go through mountains, valleys, I suffer, I am joked about, scandalized, derided, I am focused as to where I'm going because I know that the journey is as important as the destination. The second thing about it is that when you know what you're supposed to do and where you are going to, do not let anybody or anything constitute a block or a barrier before you. I've said before, if you were sent by God to the supermarket to buy oranges and you saw people buying Fanta, Coke, and Sprite, and you left the oranges and you were chatting with them, when you go back to he that sent you and you present Coke, Fanta, and Sprite to them, you'll be asked, this is not what I told you. Where are the oranges I sent you for? So you maintain your focus, you stay in your track, you run your own race, you measure your success or failure by your vision, you take inspiration from other people, you take challenge and wisdom from other people's success or failure, but you do not become them. Because for everyone that God asks to do a task, he gives them the grace requisite for them to do that work. So if I'm called to be a pastor and I want to now do something else, if the grace, the enablement, the divine help of God is not upon me, then I have to manufacture it at best and be a failure at worst. So anybody and anything that deters you, especially when you are you know you're right. And I am making the assumption that you're taking counsel, you're walking through the ropes of, of, of order and, and authority figures and structures, and you, 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 you don't want to self-destruct. So even if you feel that this is what you must do, you read about it, you find out about other people who are in it, you know, I'm, I'm taking all that as a given. But when you know that you know that you know, you're going to find in this life that we live, and there are many people that will come around you and say, it won't work, don't do it, you are the wrong person, you don't qualify, somebody else did it, they fail, people will oppose you, it will fail, they are fighting you, they would use marabou against you, the PhD syndrome, you are a foreigner, you are a woman, you are this, you are minority, you are white, you are black, they will say so many things. The joy of it is that what you are doing, they didn't hear. They only see what you produce but they don't know what is inside of you. In 2012, I think if we're going to chart a direction of success and progress, even nationally, we must take that on board. That is a scripture in the Bible. It's a favorite scripture of mine. It's in Exodus chapter 1, verse 12, when the Pharaoh of those days, Egypt, was suppressing the Hebrew people. Verse 12 says that the more they were afflicted, the more they grew and multiplied. It's an amazing thing because sometimes in life you would think that the more people afflict you, the more they try to beat you down and press you down, the more you would go down and quit. <laughs> but in life you must be like a rubber ball, you know. The harder you bounce it, the higher it jumps into the air. And so it says in that scripture, the more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied and grew. In other words, a resolve was brought in them that says, if you want to put me down, then something will bring me up. And ladies and gentlemen, for those of us who follow the truth of God's word and the reality of salvation, there is a scripture that goes like this. It says, even if my father and my mother forsake me, then God will pick me up. In other words, nothing's gonna kill you. Nothing's gonna destroy you. God is not interested in your going down. You'll bounce back. But while we are saying that, the eight things I want to talk on from these three points, and if we don't have time, we'll continue next week. Number one is that God's speed 
is the best speed.